What's going on, everyone? I got bad news. I wish I was standing up here again with more good news, like Lewis Hamilton joining the ownership group. But instead, we're talking about Tim Patrick, who was carted off the field from practice today. Never a good sight. Maybe they should just bring out the cart whenever anyone gets hurt. That way, you know the cart is not the kiss of death, and it is the Grim Reaper. Now, the whole team surrounded Tim Patrick when he went down after making a good catch over Bassey, and it was actually not an injury he sustained during the catch, from what I've read and heard, but rather the steps he took afterwards. It was a non-contact injury on his lower right leg. He was holding his knee. I don't need to spell it out anymore. It's uh, unfortunately looking like it's going to be not a good sign for Tim Patrick. Now, Nathaniel Hackett was asked not long ago about the injury during his presser following practice. He said they're going to get an MRI on it, and he didn't have much more of an update. Now, Mike Kliss tweeting out Tim Patrick not putting weight on right leg as he was helped into trainer's room. Just not good signs all around. This sucks. Right? This is not good right here. So let's send some get well wishes to our guy, Tim Patrick, who we all know as Broncos fans is probably the more underappreciated player, not even on this team, but across the NFL. So let's spam his jersey number, and I mean spam his jersey number, 81, because you better believe he'll be looking for himself and he'll have some teammates and friends searching up his name in the news cycle. And when he sees all the love coming in for Broncos country, I hope to believe that's going to help him in his recovery. At the end of the day, this fucking sucks, right? There's no other way around it. Injuries suck. You never want to see that. You never want to see one of your best players get hurt, especially when it's a player, I would say, at that Tim Patrick level, who's probably a little bit more underappreciated than he should be. But when you watch him play, he's one of the most consistent players on this team. I mean, last season for the Broncos, 734 yards and five touchdowns. Sure, those aren't eye-popping stats, but when you take into account the quarterback atrocity, atrocities he had between Bridgewater and Locke, yeah, you'll take those kind of numbers. In fact, we can even take another step, step back. Let's go back to 2020. Here are the stats among Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, and Tim Patrick over the last two seasons combined. You might be surprised to see Tim Patrick is not only leading in pretty much every stat possible, but he's kind of dominating. I mean, he's got way more receptions. Sure, there's been injuries that's taken into account, but I think that's worth noting on Patrick's behalf that he's been available. 1,400 yards and 11 touchdowns. Tim Patrick has been the unsung hero for this offense the last couple of seasons. He's been what I call the glue guy, right? He has been all reliable. You know he's going to be open over the middle. He'll get the first down, and it sucks to see him get hurt this season because everyone was supposed to go to the moon, Doge style, with Russell Wilson, and you just hope Tim Patrick could be here to reap the benefits, especially after getting that contract extension middle of last year. You really wanted to see what he could do this year with Russell Wilson at QB. Now, if it is going to be, unfortunately, a long-term injury for Tim Patrick, you better believe George Payton's going to start looking around for some other options out there. And we'll be breaking all of it down here on the channel, which is why you got to join the number one Broncos YouTube news channel and rumors. We do it all. So make sure you subscribe. Help us reach 9,000 subscribers. What are we at? 8,357. I want to get all the way to 9,000 before week one. Help me do so by clicking that sub button. Let's take a quick peek at the depth chart here just to familiarize everyone with the other backups on this team because now you're going to be relying on Kendall Hinton to step up a little more. Montreal Washington, we're going to touch on him at the end of the video, but he's probably been the star of all the rookies so far at camp. Uh, Travis Fulgram, another veteran who had some good years with the Eagles. Tyree Cleveland, I mean, there are Brandon Johnson, another rookie. Caden Davis, for example. There's going to be a lot more players on this depth chart that have to step up. And I'm looking at one guy in particular, K.J. Hamler. Fortunately, he got bit by the injury bug last season early on. I want to see him, if the needs to be filled, fill the shoes of Tim Patrick this season and make that huge step forward. Look like the second round pick he was. He doesn't play the same type of role as Patrick as a receiver, right? Uh, Hamler is much more of a stretch the field, deep threat type of guy. But nevertheless, if Patrick's going to be missing games, there are targets to be had. 
and you're going to want to see Hamler get open and take those targets and make the most of it. I also will plug this. We're going to look at some free agents out there, but before we do, just watch for cuts to happen, meaning if George Payton doesn't want to go out and spend some money on a veteran free agent, you might wait around for other teams to cut receivers who maybe are a little bit underwhelming. Darius Slayton, for example, from the Giants is one of those prime candidates who had an awesome start to his career, but now as he tapers off to the end of his rookie contract, been underwhelming, new regime, they might go a different direction. So just watch for the Broncos to be closer to the waiver wire as cuts start to be made, and you can find, you know, some treasure in someone else's dumpster. Now, we've got five free agent wide receivers to look at here because we all just love names. And there are some big names still out on the market right now. Will Fuller, the youngest and probably the best in terms of top talent at this point in their career left. Now, unfortunately, you really want to replace a potential injured receiver with one that has a history of always being injured like Will Fuller. T.Y. Hilton's another big name out there. Last year, he had a neck injury to start the season. Not really sure where he's at in terms of football readiness. Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders we'll look at closer. I tossed Deshaun Jackson on there only because he said he was interested in playing with the Broncos. I'm not interested in Deshaun Jackson. Now, let's look at Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders. One guy, of course, Broncos legend Emmanuel Sanders, popping off a little bit more right now. When you compare their stats last season... I think Beasley is probably in a better spot if he wants to play football this year in terms of being a little bit more reliable in the receptions department. I mean, nearly double from what Emmanuel Sanders had last year. But the knock against Cole Beasley is that yard, is that average. And what does that really mean? It means he's not looking to push the envelope. He's not looking to extend plays. When he gets the bread in his basket, he's going to the ground. He's going out of bounds. He's not looking to extend plays and stretch it a little bit more here. So Emmanuel Sanders, I think, would be one of those fun ideas. Would it materialize well? He's not the old Emmanuel Sanders. You know, he, he's up there in the age column. So maybe you want to bring him in to see if he's in shape and at least give him that because he's done so much for this organization. But if you're thinking Emmanuel Sanders is going to recapture some of that 2014-15 old magic, I would not have your expectations up too high. But I'll let you guys decide for this. Do you want Sanders to come back to the Broncos? A simple Y for yes or N for no. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comment section. Another interesting player we looked at is Will Fuller. Now, in 2020, I'm going to look at his stats here from that year because last year he hardly played a snap for the Dolphins. He put up 879 yards and eight touchdowns. Does Will Fuller fit the mold of what you're looking for if you want to replicate Tim Patrick? Not exactly. Not really, to be frankly honest with you. He's another stretch the field X receiver that's going to go deep and take the top off the defense. That's not what Patrick does, right? Patrick makes his money over the middle, working in uncomfortable spots, right, between the linebackers where he's going to get those blindside hits, but he'll take them and he'll get up and he'll take the first down with it. Now, Will Fuller, I think, is probably the most talented player of all the free agents left. Now, according to some sources out there, he's probably uh, waiting or reportedly waiting to sign a little closer to preseason. Find that a little bit interesting. I don't know if that's a uh, more agent talk or actual being truth being spoken there, but I think Will Fuller is definitely a name just to toss into the tickler file and consider if George Payton wants to look to free agency to find another receiver, at least for training camp and see, hey, are you in shape? Can you play still? Awesome. Let's see what you got. Now, before we get on out of here, we got some training camp notes to look at, but if you hate injuries, just like the video. This is something we should all be able to agree on, right? Injuries suck. They're never good. If we hate them, like that video. All right, let's get into some training camp notes before we send you on out of here. Uh, we got some interesting news coming in before we really get on out of here. Shout out to producer Sam. But Montreal Washington, he was the star of the show today. Usually it's been Patrick Sertan II who's been stealing the spotlight, but Montreal Washington has probably been the most proven rookie over the first week of training camp, he had a touchdown from Brett Rippon on the last play of practice, did a backflip in the end zone. He might be more than just a training camp, excuse me, more than just a special teams guy. He could make some contributions on offense as well. 
I also want to plug Baron Browning for a second because he has been doing work coming off the edge, right? He made the transition from inside linebacker to outside linebacker this offseason, and it looks like it's paying dividends because he has been tallying up the you know, uncountable sacks of that would have been a sack in game condition. Now, Dav tweeting this out right as we are filming right now, so we're going to read it together for the first time. The Broncos fear, I was afraid of this, a serious knee injury to wide receiver Tim Patrick. Head coach Nathaniel Hackett said, it breaks your heart. The worst part of this game is when things like that happen. Patrick is undergoing an MRI after getting carted off during practice. It was a non-contact injury. I want to believe the best is going to happen. I'm hoping for the best for Tim Patrick, but it's never good when the cart comes out and it was a non-contact injury. We all sort of know how that story ends. Now, if we get more news, we're going to keep you informed and updated here at the channel. So make sure you are subscribed. That way you never miss a breaking Broncos news story.